Very good. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our final seminar of the Oxford Southernizing Criminology um, for this academic year. Today, it's our pleasure to host Professor Yang Hang Liu, who will give a talk on the state of criminological studies in South Asia. Um, we're so pleased to have Professor Liu joining our group today and making our discussions even more global. So thank you very much, Professor Liu, for accepting our invitation. I'll just briefly introduce our speaker um, before I hand over to him. So Professor Yang Hang Liu is a distinguished professor of the Faculty of Law at the University of Macau. He's the winner of 2016 American Society of Criminology, Freda Adler Distinguished International Scholar Award, and the winner of 2018 Academy of Criminal Justice Sciences, GLW Miller Award for Distinguished Contribution to International Criminal Justice in the US. He's currently the elected president of the Scientific Commission of the International Society for Criminology, the elected chairman of the General Assembly of the Asian Criminological Society, and a member of the steering committee of Campbell Collaboration Crime and Justice Group. <laughs> Professor Liu was the founding president of Asian Criminological Society. He's also the editor-in-chief of Asian Journal of Criminology, the editor of Springer Series on Asian Criminology and Criminal Justice, and a member of the editorial boards of more than 20 international academic journals, including the British Journal of Criminology, and the British and the Journal of Experimental Criminology. He's also got more than 160 academic publications, including books, journal articles, and book chapters. Professor Liu, thanks very much again. Um, it's a great pleasure to have you here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Luis. Uh, it's my great pleasure to accept the invitation to give this talk to our group. Uh, on the topic, the state of criminological study in East Asia. Okay, uh, the topic is quite important, I think, uh, because there's a growing recognition that criminology has a Western-centric bias. I mean, that is one of the reasons that we have this group, right? Um, marginalization hegemony over non-Western criminology has been in existence for very many years. Okay? And uh, Southern criminologists um, led by uh, Terry Carrent and other groups has made that very well, you know, very well recognized. Uh, of course, um, Asian criminologists also has pointed out that repeatedly. Okay. So there's a, a Western criminology um, or what we call Western centric bias tends to have some uh, weaknesses such as neglect the concerns and knowledge of crime and justice in non-Western uh, world and they overlook alternative accounts that inform criminological scholarship. Well, Western theory and the policies are very often inappropriate in uh, non-Western contexts. Okay, in this talk, we'll give you a lot of those examples, uh, at least a lot of citations that if you, if you want to get into details, you can go to. Uh, and there is a conventional insufficient study on non-Western contexts. Uh, this has been a major shortcoming of criminology as a discipline. It has been repeatedly uh, pointed out by uh, Asian criminologists and Southern criminologists. So um, in our view, uh, you know, uh, turn attention to non-Western contexts is a very promising new direction for the growth of criminology discipline. So um, Asian criminology and Southern criminology has been uh, leaders uh, in this uh, 
uh, recent uh, projects or movement uh, to correct this Western-centric bias. Okay. Uh, Leon Mosawi uh, has made that very nicely. I mean, uh, he published in a paper uh, in British Journal of Criminology 218 to explain uh, why is that so and uh, uh, how that has been, in his view, uh, going. And uh, you know, he made an excellent uh, point on, on that. So the both projects has led the non-Western criminology movement to have made significant achievements in rectifying Western-centric bias in criminology. Influential scholars have discussed the similarities and differences between Asian criminology and Southern criminology. There are similarities, but there's a lot of differences. And in this talk, actually, I was trying to explain to you uh, some of the features that Asian criminology has, because most of our uh, Southern criminology group uh, perhaps are quite familiar with strengths of the Southern criminology, but I'm not so sure if you are very equally familiar with the strengths of Asian criminology. A primary feature of Southern criminology is to critically respond to the hegemony of inequality of North over South knowledge. This concept of North and South, as you know, is uh, proposed by Southern criminologists. Before I, before I explain to you um, how Asian criminology uh, do, uh, does, right? So I need to explain a little bit special uh, features of Asian Asia. Okay. Uh, you understand there's a special, this is a special geography and cultural locations. As Walkley has, uh, you know, I quote, Asian criminology being neither here nor there stands at a cross positive intersection of the North, South, and East, West in terms of geography and culture. So he can see the difference here. You can see the difference in her minds uh, between Asian chronology and Southern chronology, right? There's also a special background. Uh, I again cite uh, Mozavi. Uh, Mo Mo Mozavi, uh, Asian chronology has its roots in the founding of Asian chronological society, which is in 2009, and that Asian Journal of Chronology, which is even established earlier in 2006. A special relationship with Western chronology is very uh, interesting and we can demonstrate that and we can also show you uh, which is a uh, which is an important feature of Asian chronology. So the Western, uh, you know, Belknap, who, who is the president, past president of American Society of Chronology has said that uh, Western criminology has a lot to learn from Asian criminology. So those special features and Asian contexts, uh, which is the basis that to establish Asian criminology, those Asia contexts has many special features. That is a major um, basis that we try to establish Asian criminology. It calls for the need to understand the overall state of criminology study in Asia to make an effective strategy for rectifying the Western-centric bias. So in this talk, we concentrate on East Asia because Asia, as you know, is such a large area. You know, there's a lot of variation in, in Asia, right? But uh, generally speaking, um, you know, so we concentrate on East Asia. There is still a huge amount of scholarship there, you know, as, as argued by Southern chronologists and Asian chronologists, it's very often ignored, overlooked by the traditional criminology. So the first question we ask would be, uh, in East Asian criminological research, um, is that just the East Asian criminology or it is like a international criminology, right? It's part of the international scholarship because this is revol uh, in involves in the understanding of the concept of Asian criminology. Okay. We want to establish that with data, which is what we do in this talk. 
So the other key questions include, what are the major research interest topics in East Asian criminology? We want to know what people who study Asia or Asian criminology um, pay their attention to. So those attention include uh, different topics of justice, different topics of crime, or different theories, or how they approach theory development. So those are some key questions that we want to answer uh, in this talk. Which country and region has received more attention than others? Because East Asia has so many different countries, in there, right? And which country received a lot of attention uh, tends to uh, reflect um, where is the bulk of uh, development happening in uh, East Asian criminology? So what are the overall features of criminology studies in East Asia? So all in all, what are the major features on the studies uh, in East Asia? So what are the theoretical and empirical implications for global criminology? So those are some major questions. So I should say big questions, right? About the state criminological study in East Asia. It involves uh, its international or local uh, um, feature, uh, uh, what, what, what type of uh, scholarship is it, uh, you know, and also involves the attention of the interest that criminologists in East Asia or East Asia uh, put their attention to, right, on justice, on crime, theory, and theory development, right, and also we want to see geographically which part of the East Asia has received more attention than others, or has produced more scholarship than others. So those are the, like the, you know, different aspects of uh, state of criminological study in East Asia. So we want, to give, we want to address each of those key questions. And then we want to um, summarize the overall feature of criminology study uh, in East Asia. And we also want to go further uh, based on the analysis that we present here uh, to ask what are the theoretical and empirical implications for global criminology. So what we're doing is not just to tell you, uh, you know, uh, uh, incidents or accidental stories uh, or subjective uh, perceptions about Eastern Asian criminology, but also but uh, to build these uh, answers from the key questions for the eight key questions based on uh, some objective data. So the press, pre present, uh, the, the purpose of present study is to assess the overall state of criminology studies in East Asia. And conventionally, you know, you can hear here and there uh, from some scholars and other scholars that have different opinions about the general situation of East Asian uh, criminology. And they, 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 there is a very little systematic examination of the state of criminology in East Asia, despite there are uh, work done on some region, for example, on Hong Kong, on Taiwan, uh, you know, on one country, on South Korea, and so on, but there is not a uh, overall uh, data collection and assessment on the state of criminology in the whole East Asia. So we want to collect objective data. Uh, so we want to build the answers based on systematic data collection. So uh, to build uh, objective conclusion of the overall state of criminology requires a comprehensive collection of data on criminological studies in uh, East Asia. So no available data directly answers our key question so far at this point. As I said, studies tends to be mostly subjective. You know, scholars from East Asia or even from some other you know, Western country, including our Southern criminologists, friends, right? Uh, the tends to give a personal judgment uh, 
But we want to, what we want to do is to collect systematic data, uh, to analyze those data, to answer the key questions that we have listed above, uh, about the overall state of technology uh, studies in East Asia. So most relevant objective data would be all the studies that has been completed and published. Okay? Because you get all the published studies or completed studies on the topic of East Asia, then you would have a very uh, comprehensive and uh, objective, uh, less biased or non-biased conclusions about the state of technology uh, in East Asia. But you understand that it's not easy to do. Okay? There will be so many difficulties because the ideal data uh, would have to include all published and unpublished studies. But this is uh, perhaps um, not feasible, right? Because not all the studies has good qualities and are equally credible. Uh, some studies are less credible than others. This is just common sense, right? Okay. Uh, and there's no representative or reliable access to unpublished studies. If studies are just a research report or just uh, you know, not published, even though it's, it's important, but you know, there's a very difficult to access that. And also uh, many studies important um, for the local country, but may not be published in English. And there is a difficulty to communicate uh, to audience like you, right? Uh, all those are the difficulties, right? Even if you have all the access to all the public, pub, uh, all the studies, and it's not uh, almost not possible to uh, translate them into English to conduct such a study. So uh, the big job and uh, big uh, obstacle is to build up a relatively reliable data sets uh, that include um, all major studies, right? We might omit some others, but um, all the influential ones and reliable, high quality ones should be included. Okay. So this is what we try to do. We limit the scope of data collection to only published studies, right? We may miss some, but as we uh, understand uh, top quality uh, studies tends to be eventually published, right? So we, if we enlarge the collection from, let's say a uh, starting point, let's say 209, right? That's where Asian chronology uh, society established, right? Um, and to old journals, um, particularly we, we focus on the journals which are reputable, uh, what is the criteria for reputable? Uh, we explain that in the methodology part. And then we collect all these um, articles published and uh, then um, we build these data sets. This methodology, this data collection is going to be very systematic. The scope is very clear. And uh, what is being excluded and included it's going to be very clear. Therefore, uh, another advantage is that these papers are published. Therefore, uh, all people can access. And then you can further evaluate those studies and evaluate our studies. And you can give criticism, you can give reassessment, and then you can continue to supplement this data set so we can have a better and better improved uh, quality. Uh, data sets <clears throat> to always be able to start from here, uh, have a accurate, more and more accurate pictures about the state of criminology uh, in East Asia. So this is the, uh, this is ambitious goal and ambitious task. Uh, after, you know, I actually hear Luis, and you know, <laughs> the, the groups invite me, uh, I think it's last year, right? So I almost put it off for a year. Uh, of course, I, I have many other things to do, but I did um, uh, put a lot of time uh, with my uh, PhD student, my research team, 
uh, to systematically to accomplish such a big job of collecting all the publications, um, you know, from from uh, top journals. Of course, I've explained to you in the methodology part what what do we mean by uh, you know established or quantified or quality journals. So. Um, Based on this understanding of the data and its feasibility and its difficulty, we would have to conclude the best available data thus now are all published studies from a complete list of influential English journals. Okay. So this is the scope of the data. There are scholars try to assess, uh, you know, uh, the state of criminology, like smaller uh, scope. For example, uh, in Hong Kong, right? Uh, in uh, Taiwan, uh, uh, very few. Um, some uh, like try to assess uh, or collect pub published articles uh, in some particular topic in a particular country. Yeah, but the, the the job here we try to accomplish is the whole East Asia on all topics, on all subjects. Um, so we want to have an overall, uh, a big picture. So those, uh, those papers are, you know, uh, a little, this, this paper has been almost finished. So when it's published in your book, uh, people would have access to all this work. So they would say, okay, I'm interested to know who has uh, evaluated, let's say, uh, studies in Hong Kong, right? They could just go into the reference of the book paper, which will be a very long reference list to find the particular studies. So they could go into the article um, to see who has done that. You know, here is the PowerPoint. So I try to be sure, you know. Uh, so I try to delete most of the citations, but they are in the paper, in the full paper. Uh, all the audience and readers who are interested can access particular detailed aspects or subjects of uh, studies on East Asia. So uh, let me explain to you the methodology, uh, particularly how do we collect the data? So uh, the data collection goes uh, in such a way. First of all, we select the 17 top journals in the criminal justice field by Sorensen at all, because this group was the first who started something like that. You know, they try to uh, define and clarify, uh, you know, select the best journals. Uh, that list uh, comparatively uh, uh, excellent list. So we build upon that list and we add into 69 journals, which are SSC, SSCI journals uh, in criminology and penology category. And, you know, uh, I mean, all of you perhaps are familiar with SSCI, Social Science Citation Index. And there's this group on criminology in that citation index called penology and uh, criminology, uh, penology, 69 journals in there. Um, in, 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 in general, um, the scholars in criminology largely agree uh, only the best journals and most influential journals can get selected into the SSAI index in criminology and penology categories. So we just take advantage of that, you know, so we have a consensus whether it's a good journal, what is not a good journal, we use that standard. The first criteria is to examine whether the published research of each journal is highly related to the research topic of criminal justice. Okay. If it's not related to the criminal justice or criminology, uh, then we would um, you know, get, that get that title out. Because uh, when people compile penology and the criminology journals in the SSCI citation index, they include a lot of Let's say uh, papers, they are more of a, a psychology paper than, than crime and justice. You know, a few of those papers 
I mean, that would um, dilute uh, the point that we try to do. You know, we concentrate on crime and justice. So we take some of those journals out, right? People have different purposes of uh, compiling these lists. The, the second criteria we use is whether the study is on East Asia issues are published in these journals. So based on this selection, and uh, eventually you can see the last uh, square here, articles are four selected category, uh, theoretical articles, criminal justice articles, specific crime articles, methodology articles that has to be directly relates to East Asia. So uh, here's a table that will put all these uh, frequencies together. You know, here you can see a list of uh, 21 journals. Uh, this is include, you know, the almost all the uh, internationally well-recognized uh, SSAI journals and Sorensen uh, journal list. Okay. We included all of them in there. As you can see, there's a total uh, articles are uh, 12,245 crime and criminal justice articles has been published uh, from 19, uh, 2009 uh, to 2021. The reason for that is uh, as um, an influential criminologist, uh, uh, Liang Su uh, Wei, right? Um, he said that uh, Asian criminology, he, he defined Asian criminology uh, as from 2009 when Asian criminology is uh, established, Asian criminology society is established. The most recent year, of course, is 2021, right? Then we have identified there are 744 papers meet the criteria that just relates to East Asian issues. So that is selected as an example. Then among these total East Asian topics, there are 399 on criminal justice, 168 on various crimes, 142 on, on the theories, and 35 on methodologies. They are all related to uh, East Asia. Okay. So now let's try to explain to you what happened in those uh, in those studies, you know, what these studies tell us, right? I've, uh, I've used those data uh, to make frequency tables that we will present it to you. There's uh, quite a few tables, but uh, table one is the one that we just showed you, right? Is this one is called table one. And this table one shows you, except AJOC, AJOC is Asian Journal of Criminology, because this journal, uh, we could see directly released to Asia and only publish papers on Asia. Therefore, uh, we take that out as a local journal, right? But everything else, all other journals are clearly international scope. Therefore, East Asian criminology, this topic actually is an international scholarship. Okay. You can see that all scholars from around the world who are interested in East Asian crime and justice topics published in all these uh, 21 uh, most prominent journals. This journal, including, for example, British Journal of Criminology and American uh, Society and uh, uh, official journals, uh, American Criminal Justice Society journals, and so on and so forth. And that list that I have listed here, um, you can see later on in the, in the paper, uh, each of these observations, for example, DB, uh, that is the different behavior, right? The first one is International Journal um, uh, Criminal Justice. Uh, the first one I listed the AJC, that is AJ, Asian Journal of Criminology. An international journal of, uh, and also, uh, you know, we have the we have, we have the list. Let's say uh, uh, RGOTCC, right? Uh, that is the the first one. You know, they published uh, hundreds, 
1,318 journals, which is the which is the journal uh, international journal of offender therapy and comparative technology. This is apparently the published most East Asian articles, right? And also most international criminology articles. And JQX, you can see only published uh, three articles, just as quarterly. As you can see, the American criminology is quite local, <laughs> right? It's only published three uh, East Asian articles. Right? Criminology only published two uh, East Asian articles. But other journals, other many, uh, other top criminology journals publish a lot more. Okay. So this one tells you uh, the answer to our first question. Is East Asian criminology study a local scholarship, an international scholarship? Who are the people studying East Asia? So the answer is clear, right? The criminology in East Asia is highly internationalized. As you can see, our group is, uh, you know, here based in Oxford University. You should be very happy that Oxford University is leading this international scholarship, right? And initiating such a report on East Asia uh, criminology and criminal justice studies. The second research question is, uh, what are the major research interests or topics for people who are on the topic of East Asian criminology I interest, right? A distribution of 744 articles reflect the main interests and concerns of the East Asian criminologists. And all the studies mainly falls into four categories of research topics. The first one is the criminal justice articles. The second one is crime research articles. The third one is articles on theories. Those are three big category, as you can see, our justice articles uh, contain 399, 53%. And uh, crime articles, uh, 168. Uh, contribution is 142. Mm -hmm. So as you can see that um, the categories um, follows the logic of the concept of criminology. To tell us, uh, in this sense, in this sense, is 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 pretty much the same as criminology uh, conducts uh, research all over the world, right? And as you can see, the justice systems and practice has the largest number. That's very easy to understand because there's such a variation of Asia from the Western standard. You know? As you can see, the criminal justice system is the largest subject, particularly in a non-Western uh, region. There are so many peculiarities, there are so many uh, innovations and uh, overlooked facts and aspects uh, that were published in East Asian articles. That's why it takes the largest portion, 399 articles. The second uh, question we try to answer is the uh, attention to the different topics of justice. As we said, attention to justice, on crimes, on theory, and on methodology, right? So let's look at uh, the justice attention, policing, judicial system, corrections, and crime prevention, juvenile justice, restorative justice. So we list them in the sequence of the uh, popularity of a number of publications or percentage of the publications uh, also you know along those topics so the the paper said um, the most interesting topic is policing there's 157 papers published on that next one next most interesting is 123 is on judicial systems the next uh, is 57 articles on corrections and then, as you can see, some other topics are also very popular in East Asia, such as crime prevention, that takes 36, that takes 9%, and juvenile justice takes uh, 3%, and so on. So this shows you where the interests are. 
And what are the topics that uh, is being um, studied, right? On the policing, there's a variety of the topics that include police, police legitimacy, uh, public's perception on police, community policing, police management. Now here I only very briefly list the topic. However, when you read my paper, which will be submitted to Luis uh, in a few months, an incomplete list of all these articles. You can trace who uh, East Asia has studied police legitimacy, how many of the papers, who are the authors, right? What exactly they study on police legitimacy. And you can do that, you know, here is the list, here's the catalog of the topics, right? Now you can trace uh, details for each of those topics. For example, for judicial systems, there's a, another 100, there's 123 articles on judicial systems, but the most discussed topics are penalty system. As you can see, there's a great variation of penalty system in East Asia and between East Asia and Western uh, system, right? For example, on death penalty, right? So many European countries, uh, you know, has, uh, repeal death penalty, but in East Asia, death penalty is quite still quite uh, important, right? So if you study death penalty, uh, East Asia would be a context where you have a lot of materials to read. This is why we study East Asia, right? The topic of death penalty, even though it's already been, uh, the penalty is removed in most European countries, but, you know, it is still an important topic in Europe, even, right? Therefore, uh, the Asian context, the East Asia context will give you reasons why they still care this panel here. Now, how do they think? Now, what are the ideas, right? This is exactly uh, what thousand criminologists do, right? They went to in deep, you know, particularly in uh, quantitative interviews and observations to find out why people, um, you know, how they think about that panel, for example, right? In East Asia, you can find those important topics that is already uh, considered marginal in Western criminology, right? This is exactly why we do uh, Asian criminology and South criminology, right? The evidence system is very different. Right? Of course, uh, East Asian countries has sort of like introduce a lot of Western criminal justice system and laws. Uh, for example, I have PhD students who work on uh, evidence system in China. Uh, you can see a lot of interest uh, discoveries uh, on the differences and also uh, what other factors influence people's perceptions of evidence. You know, what, what is the fair, what is not fair, for example, right? And criminal sentencing, right? wrongful conviction. Asian criminologists gonna have uh, a coming special issue on wrongful conviction okay, very soon. And corrections, uh, you can see the specialty of Asian context again, because in East Asia, there's a lot of country, a lot, lot more emphasis on informal control uh, in the community and in the society, right? Um, like interpersonal relationships and shame, those are the concepts plays a lot of role in prevention and correction of crimes, right? So as you can see, these topics, if you get in to study those topics and uh, you will find a lot of insights, the materials that is different or less salient in the Western criminology. This is the value of Asian criminology, right? Okay. And also there are topics on crime prevention. For example, in Japan, you know, crime rates is, is very low. Recent years, a little bit higher, getting higher. But there are systems very interesting. And the role of volunteers on nonprofit organization in Japan. Um, for example, right? The drug abuse, sexual crime prevention, anti-corruption prevention. Um, those are crime prevention topics, which are very popular 
in uh, East Asia, uh, and in Asia in general. Okay. Uh, for example, when I went to India, of course, we're talking about East Asia today, but uh, if I broaden a little bit uh, to Asia, uh, you go to uh, India prison and you see prisoners cooking food for other prisoners. You will see if, uh, if you are American criminologist, American uh, citizen visiting American uh, prison, uh, you would be worried uh, if that's a problem, you know, <laughs> particularly, you know, uh, others people re, uh, can be counted on not to do anything bad, you know, when they're making food, right, for others. The juvenile justice uh, is very extensively discussed because the East Asian people, you know, their belief is that uh, the juvenile system uh, it is uh, important okay. to emphasize rehabilitation, victimization, uh, and many special features of those systems. Restorative justice is very popular uh, in Western uh, right now. However, um, uh, in 2007, 2007 uh, I published two papers to demonstrate that Confucius thoughts in China and in East Asia actually promotes the similar principles, uh, similar to the principles of restorative justice. Okay. So that's really reflect the East Asia, uh, here particularly China, um, you know, has a lot to offer uh, in understanding restorative justice. And Breezeweed also discussed shame and virtue in Confucian thoughts, arguing that can be combined with the formal law and punishment. Uh, who published, uh, you know, he published the paper in 2015, 2017, you know, continued on these thoughts, right? And in Japan, you have this Jidan, um, you know, uh, similar to restorative justice. In China, you have this Tiaojie, right? And Si Liao, right? And, uh, in South Korea, you have this confronting the victims. And so there's many uh, restorative justice practice in juvenile justice in East Asia too. So restorative justice on non-custodial penal measures uh, has, a, has important impact in East Asia. So there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, discussions about the um, victims' rights and problems um, or, with the current system and as well as restorative justice the issues uh, needs to be resolved. Uh, and also uh, restorative justice, how that prevents who bully uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, there was a study on that. So there's a rich tradition for restorative justice, despite there has not been called restorative justice you know, for hundreds of years, perhaps, right? Therefore, East Asia is uh, is very valuable content to study uh, the general idea of restorative, restorative justice. Despite uh, for many years we do not use the concept of restorative justice, this is again another area that is more and more people uh, making uh, contributions, uh, take advantage of East Asia context to study restorative justice. And um, let's, let's get into the next topic that is crimes, okay? There's 168 articles focusing on crime studies. It uh, can be classified as four into seven broad interests that reflects the main concerns of criminologists in East Asia, right? These are violent crimes, economic crimes, corruption, organized crime, youth crime and events, drug-related crimes, and uh, uh, drug addiction, uh, cyber crimes. In the sequence of uh, higher interest uh, to lower interest uh, in terms of the number of publications. So as you can see, like economic crime actually taking such an important role, you know, um, such as, uh, in fraud, um, counterfeit, rubber, uh, <clears throat> and casino-related 
And also corruption has taken a big uh, number, right? It's, it's a, those are perhaps reflect uh, economic conditions, the social development stage uh, in East Asia. Uh, again, you can get into each of the topics in each of the articles uh, in our full article uh, later, you know, the article will become an excellent uh, data set for you. The research findings are uh, crimes also, you know, I, 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 I would go fast uh, given the time limit. <clears throat> uh, you know, pretty much also, I list them here, uh, different topics that is studied. Uh, in the table, you can see each of the topics attracts how many you know, uh, articles and who are the authors, again, in the full article. And also um, economic crime, corruption, organized crime, youth crime and deviance, drug-related crime and addiction, and cybercrime. Those are the topics on crime. Next question, uh, you know, in the key question of the list of major find, uh, you know, main task, main purpose of this article, to answer those key questions, uh, the next key question is the theory. Okay. What are the interest in theory? It's very interesting, as you can see, that many Western theories as a starting point are tested in East Asian articles. And we classify them into three groups. The first group uh, shows the article that largely support the theory. And uh, the second column is the articles that partially support the theory. And the last column is the articles that object the, the theory, right? And as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, uh, most Western theory, particularly the sixth one, six theories has been tested, right? And uh, there's uh, 54 or 51%, a little bit uh, about half, uh, supported the theory, but uh, almost nearly half, 40, 42 articles plus nine articles together, is almost 49%. Uh, partially support or not support those theories, which has been always claimed by our Western scholars as uh, universal. I mean, you know, um, some scholars claim that theories are valid cross time, cross space, I mean, very universal science. But these findings here from our papers is nearly half of the theories are is a partially supported and not supported. This is the value of study ancient context, right? So uh, how do we develop a theory, right? And uh, I have proposed what I called an Asian paradigm for theory development in Asian chronology. And uh, the Asian paradigm theory development um, promotes a strategy that highlights three stages. The first is testing the Western theory. And then if we found it is not fit Asian context, then we elaborate them. And those are not all. The purpose of doing the first and second actually eventually is to propose new theories that has larger scope right, larger scope of applicability, uh, including particularly uh, suitability for the context of Asia, right? This is the um, proposed uh, steps of developing a theory considering Asian context. So the first step, of course, is testing. As you can see, actually, a large number of studies uh, devote to that first, the task. 51% of the theories provide the supportive evidence. This is important for us, right? It tells us the past established theory 
have important value to consider, right? It also tells us uh, criminology should be continuing rather than totally uh, abruptly uh, disconnected from the past, right? And then the next thing is, if we found uh, elaborations needed uh, based on Asian context, then we do that. So Asian context plays important role to developing the theory. So there's a strong link here we're talking about, you know, a continuing process of theory development in Asian criminology um, theory development ideas. So those are the six theories that most uh, studied and test, right? Uh, in the sequence of a number of studies, the first most studied theory is general screen theory, and then self-control theory, routine activity theory, and social learning theory, and the social capital theory, or social control theory and social capital theory. Again, you know, I don't get into details. I just list them here. And you can get into the details when you read the full article, you know, uh, focusing on what you are interested. Right? This will become an important resource, right? And the next thing is to give you a uh, whole view of geographic uh, perspective, which country has received most attention, right? For all these topics, justice, crime, theory, methodology, China has received the most studies. There's 342 articles, it takes 45%, uh, almost 46% of the attention by East Asian criminologists, or should I say by criminologists on East Asia, right? And uh, South Korea, the second most studied country uh, with 159 articles. And it shows like uh, growing, uh, shows a uh, uh, very strong hold of uh, South Korean uh, criminology. Uh, and Hong Kong has also received very many studies. Uh, so uh, this is for the all four topics. And then cut them into each topics, for example, for justice topics, the 399 articles, and the China again receives most attention and South Korea received the second attention. And for crime articles, there's 168 of articles, China received the most attention, South Korea received second most attention. And for the theory topics, um, South Korea actually published more paper, uh, slightly more than China, uh, uh, discussing the theories and their suitabilities. So uh, here gives you a geographic picture that China and uh, South Korea, you, uh, you find most interest uh, in theory, uh, in, in all these uh, criminology studies. So uh, here is a table in more details, like uh, in terms of the region, right? You can see uh, actually uh, quite a few regions received most uh, Articles again, China. You can see the last last row, three hundred ninety nine articles, fifty three percent. Right. So together for each category, uh, there's so many. Uh, there's how many articles been studied, right? And then this one is about crime, right? And this one is about uh, uh, theory, right? As you can see, China is, has thirteen papers on general string theory. See first column, first row, right? South Korea has also certain, uh, certain general screen theory. Uh, and each of the topics, you know, there's a, a list of the other series. Actually, uh, in total, there's 21 series being uh, studied, uh, but most, uh, mostly concentrated on the six series and we give more details. Okay. So another um, important uh, <coughs> summary Okay, is uh, what are the overall features of criminology studies in East Asia, right? Uh, these are sort of like answers our key questions, right? The first key question, remember, we're trying to look at in the whole, you know, 
all over, all, overall, what uh, what's this Asian community or East Asian community, an uh, international scholarship or just an Asian scholarship? This is very important because many, there's other scholars that think Asia is 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 a uh, is a region. Okay, so so where is the border of Asia? Here, what I'm trying to uh, explain again, Asian criminality is not defined by its region, by its geographic feature. Of course, you have a geography of Asia that gives you a fox. However, the scholarship itself, the knowledge you discovered is international knowledge. This is my concept of Asian criminology because I do see uh, people talks about Asian community, Southern community, where, where is South, what is South, is Australia South, you know, <laughs> questions like that. I mean, I define Asian chronology as a scholarship, okay? Not as just a region. Of course, materials are coming from Asia, but the topics, the interest, the knowledge is international knowledge. That is my concept of Asian criminology. And then studies address what kind of concerns and interests. What are the topics that people, or what are the aspects of topic that people are uh, overlooked in the Western literature but have special importance in East Asia? You know, this, is the, you know, this is another very important uh, topic or uh, question answered by our study, right? Uh, you know, as you can see, we the distribution of those tables tells you uh, the relative percentage or weight of concerns and interests. It answers this uh, question, give you an overall uh, summary. Uh, and then you can see that uh, some topics are overlooked. For example, about J Japan's particular uh, justice features, right? Which doesn't happen in Western. However, if you get into the details and the studies, you see significant theoretical implications. This is uh, why we have Asian community, right? And also it shows the data overall shows a linkage between the East Asian community with Western community. As you can see, many of the theories and the topics also studied in the Western. Right? But what do I see? What do I want to see this, this linkage indicated in the data actually indicating a continuation of Asian criminology or East Asian criminology from existing knowledge. A large, largely the existing knowledge are in the West, right? So Western chronology is not an enemy, but a previous literature. And we're not confined to it. We're going to go beyond it. That's why we study Asian chronology. Asian chronology provides a context that helps us to see things that is typically overlooked, marginalized in the Western conventional criminology. And we want to extend the themes originated in the West and also in the East, right? That extension of the knowledge and that growth of the knowledge can only be done better by taking a context which is non-Western. This is the point, right? This is the very major point of Asian criminology and very major uh, point that we're trying to report here, okay? And East Asian context provide a great opportunity to discover and develop new insights uh, that contributes to the growth of new knowledge of the whole disciplinary of criminology. So it is extremely important and essential. Our data and our distribution shows you that. You cannot just confine in the conventional Western criminology to talk about growth of criminology. This is the major point I try to make. You know, when we start Asian criminology, we start Asian society of criminology, 
That is the objective. The objective is to provide great opportunity, new contacts to discover new insights, which may be overlooked or may not be that feeling in the Western context. There are things that are, exist in the West, but not feeling, not strikes you to give you a lot of uh, information, but there could be strikes you from the Asian context. And also the features of Asian technology provide a foundation for developing adequate approach uh, to rectifying the Western centric bias. Right. So, uh, what are those uh, adequate approach? Uh, I have a separate paper for working on that, but uh, I could uh, briefly uh, give you some ideas about that. Right? What is the proper approach to correct Western centric bias? Right? What is the effective and productive approach? Okay. As you can see, there's uh, two uh, different approach here. Um, the first approach, I call it representation approach. The representation approach is looking at the marginalized, overlooked, and missing aspect of crime and justice in uh, South or in non-Western contexts, and then uh, pointing out these are. Uh, underrepresented, they are ignored, overlooked, marginalized. Therefore, we need to critically resume that, right? So we need to focus our attention on those marginalized groups and phenomena and aspects of the justice and crime, particularly the groups and the region. Now, in Southern criminology, we do that a lot, right? We say South has been overlooked marginalized. Women has been overlooked, marginalized. You know, African has been overlooked, marginalized. South Africa, South, uh, South uh, America has been overlooked, marginalized. So we're pointing out the weakness of the conventional Western criminology to see there are groups that are being uh, underrepresented, okay? They are unequally treated. They're being uh, bullied. They're being colonized. This is a this is of course a correct, right? So I summarize being to a representation approach. This approach actually is being also adopted in the Asian criminology, as I showed you in the data. With many uh, overlooked, marginalized aspects in Asia has been studied in Asian criminology. However, there's another approach. I would, I would like to highlight, which goes to the key definition of Asian criminology. This approach I call it context focus. Okay. Context focus approach. The stressed importance of special features of non-Western context. In this paper, we're talking about um, East, Southeast, uh, not Northeast, right? The East Asia, East Asia context, which shows you saliency of many aspects or many phenomena that is less visible or even invisible on the context of the Western centric criminology. These are human knowledge, they are important. They're better discovered in Asian contexts, right? That's the point of Asian criminology. So this is the approach, I call it context force approach. You go into Asian country, you go into India prison, right? You go into Taiwan prison, and you see under such a context, the prison does a lot of things that Western considered inappropriate, even illegal, right? So this context force approach reveals new knowledge new aspect of crime and justice in large, first of all, new knowledge, mix up new knowledge and overcomes the 
overlooked knowledge, and also particularly pointing to insights to help to understand crime and justice and develop a new theories. Without those contexts, we would less likely to see these aspects of crime and justice. And the theory is always incomplete. It cannot be applied because they're not even developed based on non-Western context. So this is the point, this is the approach I try to promote in Asian community. So both approach, representation approach, context folks approach are important in developing and rectifying uh, in developing criminality, rectifying Western centric bias. So this is the approach, right? Southern criminology tries to use more representation approach. I'm not saying they are not using the context forced approach. I'm saying they tries to be very productive uh, using the representation approach and has achieved greatly uh, in, critify, in critically, uh, uh, you know, uh, critical uh, many issues and rectifying Western-centric and North-centric bias. The Asian technology also adopts the representation approach, but also uh, stress the approach that I call context folks approach. I'm sure that you know, I, I would promote, I would advocate in the future, future enterprise, the rectifying Western-centric bias, both South Korea Southern criminology and Asian criminology will be again in the like like they were in the past, unite together to uh, promote an integrated approach that combines the representation approach and context folks approach to achieve greater success in developing criminology. This is the point I try to make and uh, here on the on the strategy and the approach, right? There's many limitations in the studies uh, that may not be able to, uh, to overcome easily, right? As I mentioned, the data uh, has bias because it's only select the best articles, high quality articles in prominent journals. Many other local journals, uh, local studies are not published in English, are um, not included. Okay. Uh, this is quite difficult to overcome, but uh, we do have plans to move in that direction despite uh, such a difficulty. However, we have established this methodology which can be modified to include more uh, articles. Of course, we have Asian Criminology Society, uh, we have annual conferences, we have a very large group of network and we can take advantage uh, to develop uh, and to find out uh, the major publication uh, arenas in each Asian countries. And I think these ideas can be used, um, you know, applied to the whole uh, range of Southern criminology uh, to develop uh, um, larger data sets uh, to understand uh, the bias and to understand the work that's been done and to understand the potential to develop and uh, developing a better criminology. Uh, in the whole discipline of criminology. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the conclusion uh, pretty much said that, right? And uh, uh, pretty much uh, the conclusion is that Eastern Asian studies and the approach that I just tried to introduce has already made significant contributions to rectifying Western centric bias and will continue uh, to contribute to the growth of a global community. So thank you very much. This is my talk. Okay. Thank you very much.